Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday there was a magnitude 3.6 earthquake not far from Memphis, Tennessee. 301 people reported feeling this earthquake on USGS. And according to the Moment Tensor Ball, you can see that we have uplift. According to Seth Stein, who is a professor of geology of sciences at Northwestern, these earthquakes along the real foot seismic zone, which is this red line here, and I've got a lot of the earthquakes tracked out, and the area, the location of um, that one earthquake that they had, or actually a series of earthquakes in 1811. But by doing studies, they have found that the stress from earthquakes, uh, from fault movement, has not built up from the faults itself, but actually by the movement of the continent on both the east and west coast. He does not believe that there'll be another earthquake up here by New Madrid, like they had in 1811, 1812. But other seismologists believe that this energy will be transferred either down towards Memphis or up north in the Wabash Valley seismic zone. Memphis, Tennessee has been doing a lot of retrofitting, preparing for a major earthquake, a 7 or a magnitude 8. Back in 2017, USGS did a scenario for a magnitude 7.3 earthquake along the New Madrid Fault. It's actually not a fault, it's a failed rift system, which I've talked about before. This goes back to the time when the continent was originally going to separate, but it stopped for some reason. And extends from the New Madrid all the way up around Michigan, and it goes up along the Great Lakes, etc. And someone said, oh no, the rift system doesn't go up there, but there is in fact adjoining faults that go up along this uh, this area. I don't know if you can see this red line. This is the failed rift zone. See how it's kind of like a fork here? Try and bring it in a little bit for you. According to one report that was published in the Atlantic, nearly 715,000 buildings are damaged. In the eight states it would feel and have the effects of a major earthquake. About 42,000 search and rescue personnel working in 1,500 teams are required to respond to the earthquake. Damage to critical infrastructure, transportation, utilities, you know, water, power, etc., gas, oil, would be substantial in the 140 impacted counties near the rupture zone, including 3,500 damaged bridges and nearly 420,000 breaks and leaks in both local and interstate pipelines. Approximately 2.6 million households are without power after the earthquake. Nearly 86,000 injuries and fatalities resulted from damage to infrastructure. Nearly 130 hospitals are damaged, and most are located in the impacted counties near the ruptured zone. There would be extensive damage and sustainable travel delays in both Memphis, Tennessee, and St. Louis, Missouri, thus hampering search and rescue as well as evacuations. Moreover, roughly 15 major bridges are unusable. Even three days after the earthquake, 7.2 million people would still be displaced and 2 million people seeking temporary shelter. Direct economic losses for eight states total nearly $300 billion, while indirect losses may be at least twice this amount. In the last week, there's been eight earthquakes along the New Madrid seismic zone, the largest being this 3.6. So if Steph Stein is correct, Maybe St. Louis or Memphis, Tennessee should be watching for the next, next major earthquake. Or maybe because of the uplift, which shows we got folding, pressure building, which could have released the pressure coming from either the east coast or the west coast. Maybe we should look to those two different areas for 
a major earthquake. I have talked about how as the Earth's magnetic field weakens, uh, we're going to see an increase in earthquakes and volcanic activity. And there is areas here in the United States which are long overdue for major earthquakes, such as Southern California. And we've seen the reawakening of many of these ancient faults. Another thing that a lot of people don't talk about or think about is the nuclear power plants. Or in fact, being on their own for a long time, such as the uh, Juan de Fuca fault zone. That's another area that's overdue. How many people actually have an evacuation plan? Do they have a plan in place where to meet up with friends and loved ones? Are you prepared to be on your own if you have a medical situation? Cut off from emergency responders? So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. Always be prepared for a disaster. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.